We've been watching the White House briefing room where we saw them testing some charts, charts a short time ago on these automatic tax hikes and spending cuts now just weeks away. Oh, joy, they're going to bring props. They're now supposed to meet with reporters at about 2.15. They don't usually bring props out to meet with the reporters. Hmm. But even if these lawmakers and the White House do reach a deal to raise the rates on top earners, will that significantly cut into our debt problem? Lou Dobbs is the host of Lou Dobbs Tonight on the Fox Business Network. Soak the rich and that'll do it. Simple deal. It makes people feel better, though. I mean, they're rich. They have so much money. And right. they, you know... Why not? If somebody has to pay, why not make it be the rich and maybe that will make a dent. As a matter of fact, if, if we were to allow these rates to go ahead, as it appears, in fact, this administration is intent upon doing, raising the top rate to 39.6, restoring higher rates, whatever they may be, ultimately, for capital gains. Uh, this will not have a significant impact, and I know that I'm going to create quite a stir by saying this, but uh, it will not have a significant impact on the wealthy in this country. What it will do is play havoc with those people making uh, somewhere between a hundred and two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. They're going to feel the pain sharply and profoundly because their rates are going to go up as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and right now we have a a group of people who are exercising the the maximum lack of intellectual integrity. Uh, as this administration is talking about raising rates, and I don't, you know, give me a number. I, I, I'm sure you feel the same way. Give me a number. You live in New York, the, the you already fair, pay 50%. Yeah, Between the, the state the, and the city and the feds, you already pay 50%. What's the fair share? I'm going to pay it. You know, you tell me we're going to solve our fiscal cliff. We're going to solve our debt problems. We're going to deal with a dysfunctional government. We're going to resolve that. You tax me. You tell me what the number is. My wife and I are going to sign up. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is I think most Americans feel the same way. Mm -hmm. But that isn't the issue. The issue is that over 60%, of the federal budget right now is going to entitlements. It's unsustainable. We have four trillion dollars in unfunded and unfunded liabilities to public employees, whether at the local, the state, the county, or the federal level. We have a crisis here, and we have we have elected officials of both parties, of the Senate, of the House, and the White House, acting irresponsibly. And I think, frankly, uh, it, it, if it weren't so serious, it would be laughable because they continue to posture. They're going to have their little charts out there. They're going to have their little pies, their little bar charts. And, and it's really going to be comical but it's if a they populist persist. Argument. It's a populist argument. You know, we don't want to, we, the administration, yeah. don't want to tax the middle class. We just want to soak the rich and they have to pay their fair share. And even if you, As, if, way, but even if you raise the taxes on the rich, the, the, the point is that that funds the government for two months? Uh, about that. Just okay, about that. And, and, then, and then, then where do they go? Well, then you're going to have to have more charts and another meeting in the afternoon in the White House. And do the taxes go down to the next layer that uh, now considers itself safe? Here's the reality. You cannot, if you appropriated the wealth, all of the wealth, appropriated their wealth, you could not satisfy the deficits and the debt of this government. So this is a this is a lie, and we have a fourth estate, a national liberal media that won't report honestly well, about what's happening. All right. So, and, uh, on the one hand, they want to tax people more, sure. rich people more. On the other hand, they want to um, cut entitlement spending. And there's a you know, are they really going to do that? Are they really? No one. Everybody is in favor of it in theory, but then when you actually ask them, what do you? What will you cut? The, nothing. Uh, not right. Social Security. Not Medicare. Not Medicaid. Nothing. We, you know, we, we can look at the White House and, and its insistence upon higher tax rates, and, and that's an easy target, uh, and, and certainly it should be targeted and uh, rebutted. The Republican Party has done what, though, instead? They have acceded to the idea of higher taxes broadly. I mean, we heard over the weekend Senator Lindsey Graham, uh, Congressman Peter King uh, joining in. But they're talking about closing loopholes and oh, deductions, yes. which of is what they're. Romney ran on. I mean, that's yeah, been a Republican right. position for a while. And they just discovered it. Where were they when the Republican standard bearer needed that support? There is such a, and I'm being kind here, such a lack of intellectual integrity surrounding this entire issue mm -hmm. uh, that it is... If these people had any shame in Washington, D.C., they'd be embarrassed. But, they have, they but they're political slightly... animals, Lou, and they have to think about what is sellable to their constituents. When, they, when, the, when the simpson Bowles Debt Commission got together and said, we've got to tackle this debt, it's mm -hmm. going to kill us all, uh -huh. uh, they came out with, let's say, well, what if we just raised the age of Social Security retirement by one year? We went to 68. And what if we did it, when we did it in 30 years? So we're not going to do it right now. We're going to do it 30 years. Dick Durbin. Dick Durbin uh, wanted that. He said, okay, I'll sign on to that, a Democrat. So, sorry, Deb.
We don't, we don't have the time. Okay, but we have the, a Dick Durbin soundbite. Anyway, trust me, Dick Durbin said that. He, he was in favor of it. No, wait a minute. I can't stand killed. this. We're losing a Dick Durbin soundbite here. <laughs> Listen, oh, time is short. Megan, tell the me point about is, this. Dick Durbin couldn't sell it. Uh, the left, Dick Durbin the couldn't left sell peanut for, butter to children. You know, but it was children. one year. It was raising the retirement age by one year in like 20 or 30 years from now. Here's, here's the deal. The Simpson Bowles Commission was only a starter. It wasn't a solution. The reality is that this government is too big, growing too fast, trying to do too much for too many. And a child, a 12-year-old with a basic understanding as in this country that would equate to uh, a, a second grade math uh, comprehension, could understand this isn't working. And we have people playing such games, such silly games in Washington. And do we go over the cliff? Right now, I'd say the odds are very high that we do because these people have no appreciation for their responsibilities, either to themselves, their constituents, or to the country. Lou Dobbs, always interesting talking to you. Thank you so Good much for you. being here.